Hello, in this video I'll walk you through the main steps I took to create these ping pong bats. I'll revisit some of the blocking and modeling steps, dive deeper into textures and show you how I set up the scene to achieve renders like this. All right, let's begin. These are the ones I created for the original project. And just to show how I created this prop, I'm going to redo some of the steps. For example, how I approach the blockout of the bat. For these kind of props that are pretty flat, I usually use this approach of just having one polygon and extruding it all around the silhouette I want to create. I go back and forth between the smooth preview and the low poly version to see how the curves go around the object. This is not very recommended, like it's, it's actually not recommended to model with the smooth preview on, but because I'm doing kind of like a very round object and later on I will still smooth it. I think in this case it's useful, at least it's useful for me. Maybe it's not the way, but you know, it works. Once I get the, the contour, I go ahead and work on the topology on the inside. I don't stress too much about it. Maybe I'm not doing a great job in topology. Maybe this could be improved. But for these kind of projects, which are product photography, let's say, poly count doesn't matter that much because this will be rendered just once. And you can go crazy really with the quality of the textures and the amount of polys. Here you'll see me fixing some of the topology just to make it nice. And here is a quick comparison between the previous blockout and the new version I created. Of course, the new version looks nicer. I didn't put much effort on the first blockout. Yeah, once I have the overall shape, I extrude it and duplicate it so I can create the, the rubber texture on both sides of the bat. I make a duplicate. Uh, I select only the polygons I need for one side, extrude that and put it into position. I add some bevelings to, to the edges of the bat and also of the rubber material. So everything looks more natural and not 3D rendered. So there we have it. That's the new mid poly, I would call it, if that's a thing. The old blockout, the new blockout, the mid poly and the high poly version. Now in Substance Painter, I approach the bake pretty straightforward. I'm only baking the maps I need, the normal map, the curvature and ambient occlusion, uh, because I won't be using like any subsurface scattering in this case or any other map. This prop is quite simple, actually. If we have a better look at the textures, you'll see that I set up a wood material only on the sides of the bat and I divided the UVs so that the edge of the bat, it's a perfect straight UV and that allows me to add another wood material to that section. So it looks like a plywood that it's all glued together. So you see the edge from the side and you see the wood material from the front. Again, I'm approaching this as if I will be building this prop in the real world. And this is how it would look if you will cut with a CNC a piece of wood. Now, same thing for a handle. I didn't cover how I approached the UVs for this prop, but again, it's quite simple. So I just went around the contours and I added another wood material to the handle and a little bit of color to the bottom of the bat and created uh, different alternatives, blue, pink, green, just to have uh, options when exporting everything. So the final render looks a bit more colorful. One thing I'm paying more and more attention to in my renders is to add color variation because colors are not solid in the real world. So I think it's nice to add some grunge to the material just with a color variation and blur it out so it's very subtle in the end. And you know, you can add two, three color variations, you know, you can go crazy really, but there's a point that, you know, like it won't be noticed if you add five or six color variations to the same color, it, it will just be unnoticeable. There is some effort you have to put into it to, to sell the illusion that this is a real object but no need to go crazy. This is not the only variable that sells the trick. Here's a quick preview of how the render looks in Substance Painter. I think this render engine iRay is beautiful. It renders everything so naturally and there are no settings. You just set the amount of time you want the render to run through, which is great and very straightforward. Now, if we jump into cinema, I'm going to show you like what was the benefit of having textured the wood underneath the rubber. I could have easily clipped those polygons, but what I wanted to do for this breakdown is add one more effect that wasn't on the original renders. And that's as if the rubber would be peeling off the bat. I imagine this in kind of like advertising photography 
where you show the quality of the wood underneath the rubber. So that's why I like the idea of the rubber kind of curling out of the bat. Here I'm kind of like tweaking how this curl would look and what's the perfect angle, you know, because it is getting deformed. It's not respecting the size of the object. It's actually deforming it way too much. So it's a matter of deforming it the right amount. So it sells the trick. You'll see me here plugging all the shaders that I exported from Substance Painter. I didn't cover all the steps on how I exported the materials. I have some presets and I usually merge the ambient occlusion, the roughness and the metallic in one map. Let me know if you are interested on in seeing that. I can make a specific video about that point. I really like how the Arnold render looks, but I find Maya not too comfortable for my style. I think Cinema 4D is a bit more uh, intuitive in that sense. Or maybe it's because I learned cinema first that I'm more comfortable with it to put a scene together. Definitely love this render engine. It, when lights are set up properly, it looks amazing. So usually I keep the scenes pretty simple as a three point light and maybe a dome as well. In this case, I'm only using a pretty simple dome with an, with an HDR and a key light. I love actually this feature from Cinema 4D that you can set the light as the camera. So you are actually moving throughout the scene, pointing the light wherever you want. One thing to remember is that you have to go back to perspective view. Otherwise you will be editing your lights over and over again. Here I'm setting up a pretty simple scene just with one bat, just to show how I import the prop, set up the material, lights, the camera. Moving on to the actual scene, here you can see four bats with different colors that I had on Substance Painter. I exported all the same maps, but the color one and created iterations of it. So I can apply different colors to each palette, right? And it will be easier only to replace one map. What I'm doing here is I'm noticing that the ball actually is too shiny. So I don't want to go into Substance Painter and change the roughness. So what I'm doing is the lazy version of that. I'm just color correcting the roughness map. I added a color correct node in between the roughness, uh, the final material, and just added a bit more gamma to it. So it becomes a bit wider. That means it's going to be rougher. So it won't be as reflective. Here again, you can see how I have a setup with one or two cameras. The first camera, it's 80 millimeters. The second one, I think it's 120. I have an infinite background and three lights, the point light illuminating only the background, the key light illuminating the props and the dome bringing everything together. What you can see me doing here is the same steps I was doing on the previous project which is curling the rubber of the bats. So they all show off the, the wood that is beneath them. The, the further from the camera, the bats peel less and the closer to the camera, the bats peel even more. This scene is looking great already. And this new addition, I think it adds some interest to it. What I'm noticing here is that the roughness of the blue bat, it's a bit too low, so it's quite shiny. So I'm going to do again this trick of using a color correction node to make the roughness a bit wider, correcting the gamma. Technically, this is correcting the roughness in the entire bat. Ideally, I will duplicate the material and only apply it to the rubber. But you know, this is only for a preview, so no need to go crazy. One thing I do notice when I start creating the high definition renders is that sometimes the subdivisions of the props are not enough and you start to see some jagged edges, right? Like you start to see the polys, how they curve. One solution to that is adding a subdivision surface to those objects and maybe keeping the level of subdivision in zero for the editor so the computer runs faster. But one more subdivision layer to the editor makes the curve way smoother. You can see here the comparison between before and after. It's a little detailed, but I think it adds value to the final image. Now here is the first render. And here is the second camera with a bit of a closer look. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found this breakdown helpful and that you can apply some of the tips to your own projects. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you in the next video.